Good morning, everyone. Today we've got a cool show. We're going to be talking about how to travel in Italy by train. Stay tuned. So today we're talking about trains in Italy. Yes. Lots of people are asking us, how do you travel in Italy by train? It's confusing how it is. Actually, it's very simple. Well, sure. I think part of the confusion is that um, perhaps people might not be familiar with uh, being able to travel between cities um, you know, and having so much connections and then having all of the names of the different yeah. train stations. But today we're going to clear all of that up for yeah, you. And, exactly. Uh, Let's talk about the two types of trains. Yes. So first of all, there's two types of train. There's the high-speed train and the regular trains. The high-speed trains have two main routes. It goes from north to south and east to west. So the north house is Milan, Bologna, Florence, Rome, and now Reggio Calabria. And that's pretty south. It's actually. pretty south. The tracks, the tracks were there. The, yes. But they, they didn't finish it um, until now because yes. of COVID, yeah. actually. So, so that's the main north-south, while the east-west goes from Torino, Milano, Venice. So these are the high-speed train. They go to up to 150 kilometers an hour, so mm-hmm. they're really fast. It takes about two hours from Milan to Florence and about an hour 45 from Florence to Rome. So it's actually really, really good. Sure, and, and it certainly beats uh, taking an airplane Yeah. because um, you can just show up um, and, and sometimes even last minute. We'll get to that yeah. uh, in a little bit. Um, to buy a ticket for the high-speed train, there are a few ways to do it, like online. You can check our website for that. We're going to put a link there. Or you can buy the train station. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and there are two main companies. There's Italo and Trenitalia. They're both actually really good. Uh, they're both very reliable, very uh, good trains, great service. So just check on which one is cheaper and which one is most convenient for, uh, for times. Typically, though, Italo I found to be a little bit cheaper than Trenitalia, but Trenitalia seems to be more comfortable. Yes. So if you like a more luxury sort of travel, then the first class on Trenitalia is the way to go. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then these trains have different classes of service. They have like, usually they have a Prima, which is the first class, and then they have a business, which is something in between. They have a Flex or Comfort or Smart, depends on the company, they have different names, and then they have their regular uh, seconda, which is the regular uh, class. The difference is like Minusco and the, for, for us, I think the main difference is in Prima or in business class, usually there's no kids, which is much quieter. Right. And on, um, on some of the trains, they even have uh, area silenzioso, yes. meaning silent, like cars that, uh, that are silent. Uh, so you have to turn your phones off, no kids, no barking, dogs, and so on and so on. Yeah. And uh, they're actually quite pleasant, um, particularly on the longer routes if you want to nap or something like that. Yeah, if you're doing, for example, in Milan to Napoli, which is probably mm. a five-hour train mm. ride, you want to go in the Silenziosa. Definitely. Right. Definitely. So for this kind of train, you must buy your ticket in advance. You cannot just show off and catch the train and then try to buy the ticket on board because seats are assigned and you cannot stand. So if there's no seat, you cannot buy the ticket. Right, and so you get in a lot of trouble. We found that usually the sooner you buy the ticket, the cheaper. So if you're planning on going in a month, check for tickets right away. Yeah, actually, I noticed that the the first class uh, is often significantly cheaper further out. So yeah. if you book, if you if you have lots of time, like uh, we're talking about, you know, two months, for yes. instance, in advance, you can book the first class ticket, yeah, you know, very cheaply. Uh, and I think the going on the uh, on, you know, when should you go in first class on a train? Anything more than I don't know an hour? Yeah, well, it's up to you. It's up to, it depends on what you might, how much you want to spend and uh, basically. Um, but sometimes the difference is like really minimal. Like we're talking about five euro difference. Yep. So, is it worth it? Sure. I well, think we so. we travel from uh, Reggio Emilia, which is our large fast high-speed train station to Milan quite often. Mm-hmm. It's a 40-minute run. And, yeah. it, you know, we it's a toss-up what class we pick. Yeah. Um, 
So, I mean, it could be the regular class or it could be first, and the difference could be exactly, you know, five euros. Five but euros. for 40, 40 minutes, who cares? Yeah, exactly. Right? But if you're trying from uh, Reggio Emilia to Naples for five hours, then maybe we should consider the five first class because mm -hmm. it's much quieter, you can have a little rest, close your eyes, and it's, it's much more comfortable. Exactly, exactly. Cool. And now we're talking about the regular trains. All right, so regular trains uh, or the intercity, regionale, provinciale, the, these trains are the ones that go uh, in between the smaller towns and smaller cities. Um, if you're traveling to Italy from, from North America you're, and, and you arrive by train somewhere to a large city like Rome or Florence, you're gonna arrive by most likely by high-speed train. But let's say you're in Florence and you want to go to Pisa. Exactly. To see the Leaning Tower. Yeah. There's no high speed train to go. This is 40, what, 86 kilometers, yeah, I think. 86 it? kilometers to, to Pisa. Yeah. So, so you probably have to take a regionale for this kind of uh, train. So if you take a regionale train, you do not need to book a ticket in advance. You just show up at the station, buy the ticket, and there you go. Seats are not assigned, so you might uh, end up standing up if the train is very, very busy. Usually they're not, but they might. They might. Sure. And um, if you don't want to to buy it at the station, you can actually buy it on our website, traveladdictslife.com slash trains. And uh, we'll put a link there yeah. to, uh, to get the train Italia. For the Intercity and the Eurostar, you can buy the ticket in advance and you have their uh, seats assigned, so which are much better. But those have less stops than the Regionale. The Regionale mm -hmm. usually stop in every single town. Yeah. Um, they are more like commuter kind of train and uh, they are slower. But if you want to go to a smaller city, smaller destination, that's the way to go. Exactly. It's the way and to then there's some specialty train, like the train that uh, connects airport to downtown, like the mm -hmm. Fiumicino Express. That's right. Uh, the Fumi the, isn't it the Leonardo Express? Leonardo Express, yes, you're the right. The Leonardo Express will take you from Fumicino to uh, Roma Termini. And, non-stop. Uh, non-stop, incredibly cheap. And, yeah. And, um, and that's all it does, it just goes back and forth back and, and back forth. and forth. And there's a specialty train, or the train in Cinque Terre, for example. It's a little local train that stops in every single one of the Cinque Terre. That's right, from La Spezia all the way down to Cornelio? No, to Bernat Monterosso. Monterosso, there yeah. you go. It stops in every single one of the Cinque Terre. Those are specialty trains are meant to be for um, tourists to go from destination to destination and are actually quite comfortable, quite nice. nice. Sure. We've done the Cinque Terre, yeah. so it's very pretty. Yeah. However, if you're planning on going to Cinque Terre, I highly recommend go by boat. Yes. <laughs> Much more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, because in the summertime, actually, that's one thing to mention. The smaller trains in the summertime can get a little warm. If the yeah. air conditioning isn't working, it can yeah. be problematic. But on the high-speed trains, no, no problem. Oh, it's super comfortable. But last year, we took the train from Roma Termini to Civitavecchia when we caught our boat to... Mm -hmm. The Mediterranean and actually it was extremely comfortable. It was an hour train ride, it was only like that's right, nine euros versus 150 euros taxi <laughs> ride. <laughs> taxi ride. So right. it's never really convenient. It stopped a lot, but mm -hmm. it was an hour and we didn't really mind it. Sure, and uh, and it worked out really well. Yeah. Uh, another thing to note about the train stations is that if you're uh, if you have lots of luggage, yes, might be problematic, especially if you have mobility issues. Yes. Um, one thing in Civita Vecchia last year, um, we went to, so we were catching our cruise to the Mediterranean and we had to cross the tracks, but in order to cross the tracks, we had to go under the tracks. Like there's a little, there's a little, um, like staircase. A, yeah, a staircase. And it was an underpass. Yeah, exactly. An underpass. That's, that's the word I was looking for. And both of the elevators on either side were under maintenance. Mm -hmm. So these poor old people mm -hmm. going to their trains with 17 pieces of luggage yeah. had to to go up the stairs on foot with the, with the luggage. So yeah. just keep that into consideration if you have mobility issues and if you're carrying lots of luggage, yeah. um, trains might be problematic, especially the smaller ones. That's correct. That's very true. So once you have the ticket, you book your ticket, you book your seat, you book your... Um, train so what do you need to do when you get to the train station so first of all you have to check which track is your train going is going to be to on um you, there's a usually signs everywhere there's like a screen that, that tells you with the train number the track number just go to the track five mm -hmm. minutes before and there you go but actually here in italy they call the track binario binario and it might is... say b-i-n 
Yes. So you'll want to take a look at that. Uh, it might say BIN and then the number and then you just show up there. Yeah, for the ISP train, usually they have an English um, announcement as well. Mm -hmm. But for the regular train, who knows? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So. But actually, after COVID, I noticed a lot of new recordings. Yes. Uh, both in English and Italian. Yes. Thank you, COVID. Um, so it's forced the train companies to re-record everything with safety measures and this, that, and the other thing. And, of course, they have better directions now yes. uh, on where passengers should go. Correct. So if you have your seat assigned, just look for the car, uh, car number and then you can see your seat in that car. It's quite easy. Right. If your seat is not assigned, just sit whatever you find in your class of service, Prima or Seconda. Mm -hmm. And the car number in Italian will, won't say car, it'll say carrozza. So just remember carrozza is car. Exactly. And, uh, and that, will be what you, uh, that will be the area that you want to stay in. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's about it for traveling uh, by train in Italy. If you're planning of spending lots of time in Italy, maybe a summer ma a month in the summer, and you're planning on taking lots of train, then I would suggest you to download the app for the train company you want to, to go with, like either Train Italia or Italo or both. Um, that's going to make your life much easier, especially uh, the high speed train you can go, you're going to have your ticket paperless, so on your phone, um, and the app is very good for that. Sure, and even if um, folks buy the ticket online, they can then move yep. the ticket into your Apple wallet, for instance, or uh, into a PDF file, or however else yep. you know you might store it on your phone. So in that way, they're pretty uh, they're pretty up to date. Uh, there is one thing that we need to mention for the commuter trains that's super 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 important. Um, if you happen to go and buy the, a commuter train ticket at the train station, not online, but you go to the train station to buy it, you have to validate that ticket right there. That is very important. If you don't validate your ticket um, and you get on the train and they ask you, you will be subject to a fine. Yes. So check the little machine uh, at, at the train track and validate your ticket right there. Um, reason being, uh, th those tickets are not based on dates or mm. or uh, s uh, special seats. They're just like... It's just a ticket. It's just a ticket. And the ticket is valid for an, a period of time. So before using it, validate it like a bus. Right, yeah. So you could potentially use it 17 times. And this is one way to, yeah. to prevent that. Yeah. Um, although I don't understand why it is that they can send a ticket to the phone... And that one is okay. That one doesn't need to be validated. Like if you have it online, it doesn't need to be validated. But the one if you that you buy at the train station, uh, for the smaller trains, not the high speed trains, those ones need to be validated. That's the way it is. We don't know, but maybe someone is gonna leave a comment with the uh, with the reason why. <laughs> but hey, who knows? Maybe maybe this whole COVID pandemic thing will change even that yeah. for the better. Exactly. Well, I think that's it for the trains. If you have any more questions, just leave a comment down and we'll try to answer the question for you. For sure. And if you like what you're watching, if you like watching us give you tips about travel, uh, definitely go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you never miss a video. Exactly. And um, yeah, that's it for today, I think. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye.